Hello. Yeah, Alex, leave him alone, please.
Hey guys. Hey DPP. What's going on, my brother? What's going on? How are you? <laughs> All right. You got a few more days riding county. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow? It's tomorrow. Yep. 115 my oh, time. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow during the day. How long is your surgery going to last? Two hours. Two hours, okay. It's outpatient, right? So you, okay. Yeah, it'll be outpatient. Well, be I'll, probably be, I'll probably be home about between 4.30 and 6, my time. Okay. Well, we'll be praying for you. You're going to do fine. Thank you. you I'm just have I'm getting nervous because it's getting so close. Have you had surgery before? Oh, yeah, plenty. Oh, okay. So it's not that's not new to you then. Okay. This is the first time this is the first time it's on the foot. And I'm gonna and I've been practicing with crutches and I have a knee scooter. So I've been practicing during the week on walking with them and it's not pleasant. I cannot I, I don't know how I'm gonna do it with these crutches. Oh yeah, but it's 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 temporary though. That's not gonna be yeah. permanent. <laughs> no, eight weeks. It'll be eight, eight weeks. weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. With the foot, yeah. That foot is tender. So, you know, I know since I've had two foot surgeries. Yeah. It, nothing like having them done at the same time. I had both my feet done at the same time. <laughs> Oof, I don't know how you did it. <laughs> I was crawling everywhere. I had to, my <laughs> son, I had my son to pick me up, put me on the floor. I would crawl to the bathroom. Once I got to the bathroom, he had to pick me up and put me on the toilet. And when I was done, oh, he had to come back and pick me back up, put me back on the floor. I crawled, it crawled everywhere. <laughs> wow. I crawled up and down the steps. I went up and down the steps backwards. And you, you learned how to uh, get by. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's nice is we have a spare bedroom. So I'll be sleeping in the spare room for about two months. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, a, but it's not going to be as bad. It won't no, be as bad as mine. Yeah, you won't have to deal with that. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, girl, hey. It's so good to see your face. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's been crazy. I'm so I just, happy to see your face. Just had to go unclamp his nephrostomy tube to empty out his kidney. Because we oh. think he has infection. He's like running a hundred and well, we got down to a hundred and one, but a hundred and three fever. Ooh. Oh no. Yes, joy, joy. Oh, you just bless your heart. You just stay so busy. And I just have to keep praying for you all the time. I tell you, that's a lot. Girl, oh. and then I signed up for an event and then I went and looked at it and it said it was handmade items only. So I was like Don't you just hate that? Oh my goodness. I'm like, well, you know, I have all my crafts. You see my crap back here. I got like, oh my gosh, I've been making so much stuff. Was so, that for this weekend? Is it for this weekend? Yeah, the ninth. So oh. I and they send us the paperwork today. I just saw it. They have me signed up as Cincy. I was like, oh. really? So now I have to change gears real quick and get ready for, <laughs> for which is better. I, that's what I signed up for, anyways. I was just kind of switching gears. So I've been like doing crafts for like two weeks, trying to get everything ready for this event. Now I got to switch gears and get all my Scentsy stuff ready. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And then of course, you know, Holly always does my events with me. We do them together. Well, she did another event. So she's got an event. I've got an event. Katrina usually does them with me. She's got an event this on Saturday. So I just called Aaron. I was like, Aaron, help. <laughs> There's like wow. 80 members there. Wow. Supposedly huge. So mm. I'm excited for it, though. We need it. Yes. I know. That is great. This time of the year is busy. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that's what hey, I was going to Eva. Hmm? That's what I was like. <laughs> Mary told me to cover it, especially with all our new girls. Somebody oh, yeah. 
that doesn't do it the DPP style, you know, the whole, she got a garage full of stuff and a lot of products, <laughs> how to do it when you're first starting out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have been there, done that, you know. Uh, it's like we got nine people on the call now, so it's past eight o'clock. Welcome, guys, to our weekly connection call. So we have our very own, because, you know, I've been trying to work on trying to get things ready for our end of year celebration, which is this Saturday. Can I wait to see you guys? For those of you who cannot make it, we're so sorry that you can't make it. But we're going to try to go live while we're there so you guys can be a part of this amazing experience with Jason from home office it's going to be there like whoop. So uh, I asked Jen if she would come on to lead the call for tonight. She said, yeah, I'll do it. Yay. I love my I love my family because you guys are really right there to help whenever you're asked. So I really appreciate that. And Jen said, what do I need to talk about? I said, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> You're amazing like that. So <laughs> you got it, girlfriend. All right. So I figured just with us talking to everybody, they kind of wanted um, some advice, especially for those that are new that want to get into doing events. Um, Holly, who is on my team, she is doing amazing. Hopefully she's getting somebody to sign up for her with her on Thursday so she can actually promote back up to lead. Um, she does events with me. She started them out with just her starter kit. So don't think you have to be like DPP or Courtney or me that have been doing this for three or four or 12 years that have to have a bunch of products, the nice displays, stuff like that. It doesn't take much to get started. Uh, as long as you have the basic products to be able to show them, you can refer them to your website. And you have to remember that events are not solely about sales. Events are about connections. It's great to get those sales. We all love the sales, but events are really about those connections. You want to get those contacts, team members, customers, all the things that are going to build your Sensi business. So... I wanted to show you guys just some easy. Now, I have some of the event, the displays that are like five tier. You can put all the warmers. They plug in. I bought them from consultant displays on Facebook. But you don't have to have something big like that. So most of my stuff that I get, I get off of Amazon. So I'm going to show you guys some really quick things that's easy to do. You can go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's right now. I think Hobby Lobby has them on sale. These are basic, just little crates, right? You can use them for several things. You can sit them like this, put your wax in them. You can put scent circles in them. You can put car bars, whatever you want, or you can flip them upside down, put a little just cloth or something over them to make one of your displays. So you don't have to have those nice fancy displays, something simple like this. And I got this for something else, but I found out it works really good for little things that like to fall over. I got this on Amazon for like 28 bucks. This is perfect. I used it at my last my last event, and I put all my like beauty the, um, lotion, the soap, all the little like body products, and they were all right there together. So this is just a little display stand, and um, I can sh I'll share this with you guys. But it's just easy, and it just goes right together, and these come right off. So you can fold it down to travel. Let me show you real quick. Ugh. I literally just got these yesterday. This weekend. So they come off and then it kind of folds down so it doesn't take up a lot of space. So it folds down to travel, put it together. You can put anything on here. You can put mini warmers if you don't have power. So just display them on here. Whatever you want, you can put on this. And it's just something $28 off of Amazon. Or if you've got a husband that's handy, they can make it for you. Mine doesn't have mine. So you just got something easy like that. Amazon is your best friend. Um, I know, I don't think I have any of them here because they're all at my shop. Um, but do gift baskets, especially this time of year. You've got the little wine bags that you can put the scent flower in. Amanda did a great job of them. That's where I got it from. Did an event right after that and we sold three of them. I almost never sell fragrance flowers. 
but I had them in those wine bags with a little bow on them, ready to go. And we were selling them. So just make sure you're doing little stuff like that. If you're not in it, have the consultant, I think it's an event group. Um, I'll link that as well. I'll link everything after this and show you guys. But they have a lot of great ideas for what your vendor booths to set up with. Um, you can make a lot of use in a small space. I did one last year that I had less than a six foot table and I still had all my warmers, my buddies, just take a little bit of everything so that they can look at it. They can always go to your website if they want to order. If you've got more stuff, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't take much. Like I said, Holly, she was um, top of my team. She was over 2000, her best month ever last, last month. She's never hit 2000. So she's like super excited. And she did that because she had like three events last month. And she didn't do anything too crazy. She doesn't have a lot of stock. She took, you know, a couple of mini warmers. She took a couple of big warmers and I let her use my display and then I also got, I wish I had it, but Holly's got it because she's using it this weekend. And again, I got it off of Amazon. It's a stand that folds down and it's metal and it's got hangers that come off of it. And you can hang your wax on it. You can hang your scent circles, your car bars, your scent packs, whatever you need. We always hang that up and do usually the small stuff. And it folds down. And I don't think I paid, but maybe $20 for it. So it's inexpensive on Amazon. Like I said, I'll link all that for you guys afterwards. But um, anybody any, have any questions? Because I know I've been doing this ever since I started. I started out doing events. I know DPP is the queen of events too. Oh, I know what I did want to tell y'all though. Something simple, again, at Hobby Lobby, they're on sale. Get you a little jar like this and take your testers and put it in it. I found that we used to try to do like fill out the form, you know, to get their contact information to win a mini warmer. And we found people just walk by. They don't want to give you their information. They're like, nope, I don't care. I don't want to win a warmer. We filled these up. You count how many you put in it. And you put some of your testers that you get with your starter kit. Put them in there, count them, remember how many is in it. And then on that little slip, you just put guess how many testers. Closest without going over wins a free warmer where we used to have people like we're not so out of information they're coming to us asking us how they can enter for the, the drawing so something as simple as just changing the way you do it instead of just asking them for their information and telling them if they you know enter to win um, a mini warmer we have every person comes up wants to fill one out and we couldn't believe it the first time that we did that and we're like, we're lucky to get usually two or three people that'll give us their information. That next, the first event we did this, our box was full of contact people because they wanted to guess and they wanted to win that warmer. So it's something as simple as that. You don't have to go all crazy, do a little sleep of paper, ask for their name, phone number, email. And then just tell them to write their, their guess on that slip of paper, put it in a box. I have a little box I got Sorry, y'all. I'm a mess up in here. This is actually the one right here. We haven't even pulled them out yet. That's how many we filled up my box. And we're lucky to usually get two or three people to give us their information. So this was our last event we just did like a week or two ago. But you don't have to have something like this. We forgot it one day. So you know what? I think I got it at... Um, I think I got it at Office Depot. I'm pretty sure I got this at Office Depot, but I bet you could find it on Amazon too. And it's got a little slot right here. It comes with the key and you can actually put something in it. It holds up and um, you can put the information like enter to win, um, but we just put it there. We don't even put that on it anymore. And then we made a big flyer on Canva that just said, guess how many closest without going over wins a mini warmer. So, but we forgot this one day. So me being my inventive self, we just took an empty woof box and cut a hole in the top. And that's what they put their stuff in if we forget this. So easy peasy.
use what you got. You don't have to spend a lot of money and you can just work your way up slowly. The way like Holly started it, most of the girls on my team do events. And the way they started is they started out with just their starter kit, a little bit of information. And then as they have those parties and they add team members, they have those extra credits, they use items to stock up for events. So they're getting the scent circles, the mini warmer stuff that you can get for cheap or free, and then the half price so that that gives them that stock that they need to slowly build up so that they have it. So, anybody? What questions does anybody have? I'm trying to read the comments as I'm going, but it's hard. <laughs> That's amazing. I like the little stackable thing. You said that you can put mini warmers. Can you put standard warmers on there without it collapsing? It's It won't collapse. The only problem is it depends on how small they are because this is only about four inches right here. So you might be able to. Um, you can always put them on the top shelf, though, for sure, because the top shelf is sturdy. Maybe the top shelf put a couple of big warmers and then the smaller ones on these that are that fits right in here, of course, as I'm trying to do it. There we go. So it goes on there. They're pretty sturdy. And you just stick it on there. And then see, there's that little bit of space. So it doesn't really give you a lot of room for a standard warmer. But you could try. I haven't tried it yet. But I know on the top, you have plenty of room for the warmers. So you can at least get, you know, two or three warmers on the top of this. So... Yeah, and then you just pull it out, add a bomb. It worked really good the last event that, like I said, I had, I put all the body products because usually those fall over and it it just looked much better having them set up on something like this. So, and it brought more attention to them too, where people usually don't look at our bath products. They were right there where they could see them and they were, um, we actually put our room sprays on it too. Um, it was great for the room sprays. So we put like the top two shelves were the bath products and then the bottom two shelves were um, room sprays. And I fit probably each shelf takes two rows. So it'll take two rows of uh, room sprays. I think we had like 48 room sprays on two shelves. So it holds a lot. Um, I got it on Amazon. So I will put the links to those two on there. I have two different kinds. These that were like $28, I think. And then I have another one that's a dark wood that I think I paid $30 for, but I was able, I ordered those and I got them in, I think two or three days. So they're still shipping pretty quick. Anybody so with a little, uh, with a little jar. I love that with the testers when you allow people to count those. So they're standing right there counting the, they can't oh, touch they do that? You tell them they can't touch Oh, the that's right. They have to guess. Okay. So they eyeball it. You tell them you can't pick it up. You can't turn it. You just have to sit there and kind of eyeball it. And they, you know, you can see them trying to count. Uh, we've only had one person. And I think we've done this the last three or four events. Only one person has actually got the exact number. But um, some get close, but we've only had one that's got the exact number. And if we didn't have this the first time, we didn't use a jar. We just had like a basket and we just put them in a basket and just told them you can't touch them. You can't pick them up and count them. But um, I like the jar because then they weren't tempted to pick them up and move them around or take one out or whatever. So it worked really good, though. Oh, I like that. Like I said, it was it, it. We couldn't believe the difference in how many people were willing to give us their information, but because they were doing it for a reason. Whereas before, you know what? You that's um, uh, and that's something that can be done on live. You go live on Facebook and hold mm -hmm. up a jar and ask people to guess how many are in there. That's something you can do anywhere. Yes, that is yes. pretty cool. Just to get a jar. You guys hear that? Get your jar with some testers and go. And do a selfie and ask people to guess how many are in there. You get people to, to start participating and get the algorithm up. Yes. Get that interaction post. And um, I thought I had him here, but I probably took him to office. But I mean, just little things. Go to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is your best friend 
when you're doing events and stuff and making gift, even if you're not doing events, if you want to do gift baskets, that is like my thing. I love doing, yes, great for a home party too, Sakima. So it's, it just makes it so much easier. You know, you go there, you spend a dollar, you're not spending that much money. They have these really cute, they're candle holders. So it's small in the back, just big enough to fit one of our hand soaps. And then in the front, it has like a gnome or a snowman or something. So we're taking that, putting a, a hand soap on it, and then just putting a little cellophane around it. And people are just, they think they're so cute. And it's something easy that you can go get at Dollar Tree. You know what I was thinking? I saw this before, and you probably have too. Um, my wheels are just turning with this jar. I mean, you can even take that jar and put it out there and ask people to guess how many are in there. You can do a selfie and say, guess how many are in there? And you can say, you'll be glad you did. And you can message them and let them know that this is how much you can get a warmer for. You know, you can say, you guessed the right number. You can totally get a warmer for this price. Yep. It's a personal special, so you can do it privately. But that's a fun way to get some interaction going. Oh, yes. And you know me. I love the interaction posts. <laughs> I love them. And don't forget, too, I think that was Courtney's um, PVR tip today, is in the same sense of doing events, you can do your own event. Do it at your house. If you have a business that's willing to let you do it there, I'm lucky that I own 88 acres. So we have a huge office and I've like devoted one of them to just my Scentsy. But, um, and I have room that I have several friends in the area that do direct sales or, you know, one makes tumblers, one, you know, does whatever, like she said, ask a few of them to come there with you. They'll bring their customers and then they can shop all your stuff. So if you've got, you know, a boss or a friend that has an area that's big enough, ask them to do it there. Uh, I did see, I think Jennifer posted this where you just go on and you say, hey, I'm taking appointments for you to come in and you can do your Christmas shopping at my on my, you know, personal Scentsy stock, you know, message me for your appointment and just set up times for people to come in. So, um, but of course, remember, you don't want to shop my personal stock, my personal items. And what I do is I'm very... If y'all have watched any of my videos, you know I love my buddies. <laughs> Me and my son are addicted to the buddies. I have probably everyone that's come out since I joined Scentsy. So what I do when I go to events is I will take, before the event, I will check and make sure what is still available on the website. And if it is available on the website, even if it's my personal buddy, I will take it to the event. Because if I sell it, I know I can get, I can replace it. So, um do that if you're going to the event you have personal stock if the stuff is still in the catalog or if it is um still on the site somewhere like some of the holiday warmers anything like that take it with you even if it's your personal warmer because if people buy that you know you can go back and reorder it that day so just because you don't have stock to sell take your personal items and put them up on display and you'd be surprised. I've had many times. That, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, you know what? Because it's a display item and, you know, it's been used. There's wax in it, whatever. I might take $5 off of it or something like that because I know I've already got that commission on it. And it was my personal warmer anyways. So, again, you can't advertise that. But if they are interested in it and they're like, well, there's it's not in the box or it's been used. I'll always knock a little bit off because it was my personal warmer. And I just let them know this was a display item because I don't have any brand new in the box. So I'll discount this one for you a little bit. And typically people walk off with them and then I just go back on the website and order it that night. So you don't have to have a lot of like backup stock to do an event. Take your personal stuff. Most of you were Sensi customers before you were consultants. So most of you joined because you love the product. So you have them. Just take your personal stock as long as you can restock. So if you're like me, I'm very attached to some, like I will never take um, some of the buddies that I know I can't replace. So like my, um, my Simba and those like that, that only come back every now and then I won't take those because I know I can't replace them, but take personal stuff.
that's a good idea <clears throat> to offer a discount on a warmer that you got this played. So what I do, I offer free bar with mm. mine because this way it'll get them to experience the wax. So that's what I do. But it's so good that we can offer whatever special we want to offer. Uh, I also have a clearance table at all my events. And I shop the clearance section on a regular and also the flash sale. So I have a table and I, you can't display um, you can't say flash sale like that on a sign, but what I'll do, let's say that the warmer original price is $50 and on the flash sale, I may have paid 15 for it. So I might come back and price it at 35 or $40 and I'll let them know these were originally $50, but all these are marked down to like 35 and $40. They don't care what that warmer looked like. That's another thing, guys, just because you may not like how it looked, they don't care. As long as it works and you and they're thinking that they're getting a deal, they want it. They don't care what it looks like. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same season. As long as it works and it performs, they just want a deal. So mm -hmm. even with the wax, if it's wax that you may not like, somebody else going to love it. So don't just get things based on what you like. Make sure that you have enough out there with you working an event that somebody's gonna love it just get a little a great assortment of, of products but the things that you have the most would be like your fresh and your bakery those sell the most for me they do uh the holiday right now people are buying the holidays uh well i mean bars and what's the other one uh fruity is there's a line of fruity in there so during the summer times they buy they'll buy more fruity but in the fall time, they do want more fall. But the ones that you know they're going to sell that they'll buy all the time will be the fresh and the bakery. They buy that year round. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's a classic one. In the wintertime, mine is winterberry apple tea. I know we got DPP on that when we did that Scentsy Soap thing. That's, that's oh, one yeah. of my... Yes. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I wasn't expecting to do this event this weekend. I had already, my family knows, and this is a great PRV tip for all of you as well. My family knows that they are all getting Scentsy for Christmas. Every one of them knows this. Luckily, my family all loves Scentsy. But think about it. You're going to go out and you're going to buy your mom and your sister and your aunt and your cousins, whatever, whoever's on your Christmas list. You're going to buy them a Christmas present anywhere, right? Wouldn't you rather have that commission come back to you next month when you really need it after Christmas? Or do you want some big box store to get that that you don't even know who's getting it? So my family knows that they are getting Scentsy. Every one of them knows. So right now I have like four or five of the Willy Wonka sets, four or five of the Scents of the Season, four or five of the Scentspirations because all of my family, my sisters, my daughter, my parent, they're all getting those gift sets for Christmas. So unexpectedly having this event, that's what I'm going to take this weekend. I will take those and then just reorder them when I get back. So, and if I don't, I know what kind of wax they like. I'll just make them up something. But I have all that on hand because I was already planning to get that for Christmas. But use that to per your Scentsy to purchase birthday presents, Christmas presents, whatever, get money back. on. You're going to spend it anyways on them. You might as well get it back the next month for you. That's a great tip. I'm going to Albuquerque next week. So I have a little stockpile in the other room of all the things that I'm coming to pack and take with me. My daughter in love, she's getting her stuff. Rome is my grand princess. She's getting her stuff. My son is getting stuff. I got a pal. And my son said, why don't you just ship that stuff? Nope, I'm not paying the shipping. I'm bringing it. I got a big luggage. It's going to be full of Scentsy stuff. And as soon as we get there, it doesn't stop there, guys. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to have to advertise. Once we get there, they go, my son, I've already told him, I want you to hold up that body wash because I'm going to take pictures of you holding the body wash. My grand princess, she's going to hold her buddies and we're going to do a TikTok. I've already told them, I said, well, look, we're going to do a TikTok. So I'm going to make sure that when they get their gifts, we're going to advertise and show what they're getting. So this is how you can show that your family is involved in your business. It doesn't matter if they're close to you 
or far because even when I ship things to them, they already know what to do. Take pictures, send the pictures to me so that I can show people that we as a family use our products. Yes. And I know mine all do. Mine love it. Like when I went to see my mom, I went Black Friday shopping with her. And when I went, I had to take two warmers. She had bought the um, warmer of the month for November, the um, the Christmas tree one. She would bought two of those for me, one for her and one for my grandma. And then she bought three fragrance flowers. So I had to make sure I took those to her. And I told her, sorry. And I took her the um, Sensorations. She already got hers. And because um, she loves cinnamon bears. So I knew she was going to love that Sensorations. So um, I took her there. I'm like, well, the rest of yours hasn't come yet. So I will have to mail some of it. But she's not that far. If I have to, I can drive up to her. So, but yeah, I had to take Scentsy with me whenever my family comes down. Once a year in July, my family comes and we have, they have like their vacation and every time that I typically take at least one tote of wax so that they can go through and they all stock up on their wax when they come for vacation. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> That's great. That's a great idea. Uh, I was thinking, my daughter asked me the other day, Mommy, what uh, fall fragrances do you have right now? I said, everything. Are they new? I said, yes. So she knows what to do. I mean, <laughs> Everybody is, they know what to do. They know to get the Scentsy stuff, whether it's clean, laundry, uh, personal care, the wax. They know that this is where they're going to get everything. Um, and then you know what? And something else, we have so many fundraisers going on right now, guys. So take advantage of that. Rachel has one with the buddies. Courtney, she's got one going on with the buddies. Um, I think Angela has something going on with the buddies. Uh, I have the spa, a senior. Kathy and I, we're working that one. So, Jen, do you have a um, a fundraiser going on right now? Um, I do not with everything. Typically, I do um, with everything that has been going on since September. I kind of got, um, actually about August, um, when I started having to take care of my mother-in-law once she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so, I really, you can kind of tell my business went down a little bit during August and September, just because it was doctor's appointments, insurance, taking care of her. I, I mean, I didn't go into my office. I didn't go do anything. I stayed by her side um, until she took her last breath. So it was, and then it's just struggling coming back from that, um, you know, getting accustomed to life without her. She was such a huge part of our life. So I kind of slid off on it. And it was really too late for me to actually do my own this year. But um, usually I do. I've got Hang Tough, which is local here in Tallahassee. And they help um, families of like special needs and autistic children. So, and they don't only help the autistic children, they help the families that kind of get forgotten sometimes. All the, you know, the autistic children get all the help and then the families are kind of forgotten about. So I do a fundraiser, usually a buddy clip or a buddy drive for them. So um, I just didn't do it this year because I didn't have time to advertise because I just wasn't online. Oh, yeah. I know you're very active with doing things. I know as soon as you join, you jump right in to help out with the spoil of senior. So I know that when you do, when you have time, you do it. Um, it looks like a Tammy was asking a question about um, wording. I think this was coming from the statement that you made about shopping from, I guess if you were to have an open house in your house, you have to be careful about how you word things because you can't say I've got stock on hand. So you do have to be careful about how you say that, but you can all, you can just say you have an open house. I would just keep it blank like that because th this way you don't get in trouble. <laughs> I know you can't say, well, come shop from my inventory on my, you can't say that. Yeah. Or you can say my personal my stuff. That's what I was saying. If you say anything about inventory, you can shop my personal items, see what I have. But yeah, you got to be careful with when you advertise that. You can say open house, but you cannot, you can't advertise that you have like a lot of stock. So, and then remember those of you that if you do know somebody that has um, a small shop 
or something, a barbershop, nail shop that you always shop at. Remember, you can set up a small display. Um, I would say just something, maybe a mini warmer and maybe a body, something like that. Um, just a few products, but you cannot have a big selection. You can have a small supply with some of your information and you cannot deliver it at that site. So they can contact you to order it and meet you somewhere else, but you cannot do any of the transactions at that location if it is a retail store. So just be careful when you do that as well, but you can set up information. You know, your car dealership just bought a car there. Ask them if you could set something up there, um, but you just can't, you know, deliver the items there but that is something too to remember that you know that's another way to get contacts somewhere you go all the time they'd probably be willing to help especially if it makes their shop smell good because <laughs> i will tell you i have a record service so i have people coming in all the time that have had wreck cars not usually a good situation but um when you walk into my office i have warmers on display so when you walk in my office, I have a shelf. And on that shelf, I have the warmer of the month. In it is melting the scent of the month. And then I have like a buddy or two that are my personal buddies. And then um, I have a couple of my Disney warmers. And they're just there. And then, of course, we're record service, so I have time maker. When you sit down at my desk, there right next to them is the car's tomato warmer. So as they're sitting there, they're smelling the Scentsy. So even though I'm not trying to sell it there, it's only there to make my office smell good. People notice it. And then they'll ask. And then, you know, in my office, I, this is the first time all but one of my girls in my office are on my team. So, and the one that, the one that is not on my team, her mom is. So, um, yeah, it, my office is a Scentsy office. My husband sometimes goes crazy when he walks in, especially on a launch day. Cause I'm like, did y'all get it? And he gets mad because we're doing too much Scentsy and not enough, you know, towing, but, <laughs> but that's what I do. So I use that to my advantage. I don't try to sell it there, but they can smell it. And then they'll ask, and then I'll give them my card or my catalog. And all my tow trucks have fan diffusers and pods in them, or they have the car bar clips or the um, the car bars, so that when our customers get in there, they can smell them. And my drivers know if they ask where to get them, they refer them to me. That's an awesome strategy because uh, my husband, for a long time, he was selling Lexus, and I would tell him. Why don't you put a warmer on your desk? He just straight up refused to do it. He would not do it. Didn't do it. Wouldn't. I was so upset with him. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go around you. I went to the manager of the Lexus dealership and introduced what I had. And they decided to put the warmer in the restrooms, uh, the men, the men restroom and ladies restroom, and also on the showroom floor. And I went over to the Range Rover store, did the same thing, talked to the manager there, went to the BMW store, talked to the manager there. But he refused to put one on his desk. Well, in recent years, after <laughs> he saw me earning the trips and all the stuff, so at this dealership, guess what? He has a Stargaze on his desk. And since he had that, he has a Stargaze warmer and he has a fragrance flower. I promise you, I would say that he's selling, he's not selling, what he'll do, whenever somebody walk in, he keeps the fragrance going. He always, he said, look, somebody won't talk to you. Somebody won't talk to you. So he just give them the phone and I talk to them. And he has probably gotten about five or six orders a month of a Stargaze warmer. He's not saying anything. That warmer is sitting on that desk all by itself. And it's the smell that sale. He is not selling it. As a matter of fact, there have been some people who have actually wanted to walk out the place with the warmer off of his desk. And it's so funny. So currently I have two team members at Infinity. I don't know if they're on a the call, but I got two team members from Infinity. Well, this past Saturday, they had a Christmas gathering. Infinity and Mercedes, they combined. They're the same owner. So I didn't go to the event last year. I was too tired. So this year I was tired also. I said, okay, I'm going to get out of here this year. I'm going. 
So I went and when I got there, I was sitting at this really big table and I didn't know anybody at the table. And somebody was walking around taking pictures. So I had my head down doing some on my phone like I always do. And I saw him when I when I raised up, I saw him with the camera. I said, did you just take some pictures of, of everybody here? He said, yeah. I said, I'm ready because I wasn't ready when you first took that picture, but I'm ready now. So he did, everybody started laughing. <laughs> so he took the picture and the lady across from me, we started talking, you know, just one thing led to another. This was on Saturday night. How about she joined the next day? The same person that I met that I did not know. We just started talking about things that we had in common. So, and she's so excited. Her husband was excited. So now I have three team members. All of this pretty much came from the Stargaze Warmer and me attending an event. So guys, please get out the house. Sometimes we got to get out. So I say this because when you are feeling like you can't get any results from being online, I hear this pretty often. When you go to the restaurant, don't go through the drive through Treat yourself. Go inside the restaurant. Even if, even if it's McDonald's, go sit inside and take your testers with you. Play around with your testers. Act like you're smelling them so you can get somebody's attention. Go to Starbucks. Do the same thing. Uh, go to a bookstore and make samples while you're out. Find some kind of way to grab somebody's attention. And you know what else you can do? You can go live while you're there. Like, oh, I am currently moving my office to this place today. So come out and smell some scents with me so we can have a smelling session. So it's like so fun, guys, when you go out and meet people. So sometimes we got to get out. So if somebody invite you to something, guys, don't say no anymore like me. I was saying no to everything. So I'm starting to say yes to stuff, even when I'm tired. I went to a, I went to a function Friday night and I went to one Saturday night. Then this Saturday, we're having our celebration. And the next week, I'm going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I, <laughs> so I got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I got the event this Saturday. And then Tuesday, we have to go to Mayo Clinic. I have on Wednesday, Rick has appointments Tuesday morning. I have a nuclear study of my kidney, the last test to see if they're going to let me donate. And then we have a, a break. But then Rick has another appointment on Friday. So, and then I have an event on Saturday. So, and then it's Connor's out of school because Christmas. So yeah, it's, now's a busy time. But the same thing, I, I can tell you, I don't know if Erin's on the call, but Erin for years, she had worked several other direct sales, had no results. Like nobody would buy it. She's like, I can't do it. It's me. I just can't sell. I can't do it. And I said, come with me, come to this event with me. She didn't want to, she's a very, very shy person. She did not want to go live. She didn't want to go to events. I drug her butt to the first event and it's my best event every year. And she had so much fun. She got out there, she talked to people and that opened her up. And now she's doing her own events. She has her events in her area. She does every month, that's her thing. And this came from someone that didn't want to go live. Somebody that said, had tried other direct sales. I can't sell it. I can't do this. I just think it's not in me to do sales. But so if you're good at doing events, take someone on your team that you see is struggling. I knew Erin had it in her. She just wouldn't get out of her own way. So I pulled her and I brought her. Most of my consultants that do events are because I brought them to an event with me. I showed them what to do, how to do it. They've gone off on their own. They have a different way of doing it maybe, but I showed them that initial, get out of your own way, just get out there and do it. Most of the time I just stand back and I let them do the talking. I'm there to help them, but I want them to learn how to do this so they can go out and find an event on their own. Like I said, one of the reasons none of my team is going to be able to make it to the celebration on Saturday is because at least four of us have events on Saturday. So we're booking up our December and these are girls that said, I can't do it. I can't sell. I can't build a team. One of those is Katrina that just promoted to star. She's got 20, I think 22 or 23 people on her team, but didn't think that she could do it. But again, I brought her to that same event the year later and she came to help us out. And now, She's in a different area than all of us and she does it 
she's got one Saturday. She's got one the next weekend after that. So if you can do them, then help somebody else. Have them come with you and shadow you. Or if you want to do them and you're just not real comfortable, ask someone, you know, DPP, if you're close to her, she's always asking for help, someone to come help her. And let DPP, you can't, you got to learn from DPP. She's the best. I still one day want to come do an event with you just to see how you do it. But I mean, if you're close to DPP and she's got an event, she's asking for help, go see how she does it. And just get that exposure. If you're a little bit shy, you don't think you can do it. Put yourself out there and you'd be surprised at what you can do when you get out of your own way. That is so true because our very own Kathy, Kathy, mm -hmm. who is our post to your page queen, Kathy is the one who's responsible for these Zoom calls. She was so afraid to go live. So one day she came to my house to pick up something and we were sitting, I said, Kathy, let's do something. I pulled a chair on my front porch. I really don't have a much of a front porch, but I pulled a chair out there and a table. I said, we're about to go live. She said, what? I said, yeah, we're about to go live. So it was a real impromptu. So I, we, it wasn't script or anything. She didn't know what I was going to do. I said, this is how I do it. I do impromptus because people, when you have something that's script, a lot of times people they tune out. They just check out pretty much. But if it's something that you just jump in there and do, they'll just tune in. So we were out, and I ended up putting it on YouTube, but we were out there on the porch, and I was talking about Kathy and how she joined and this, that, and the other, and that brought her out. So Kathy can go live now. She talks about this all the time, about how she just refused to do it. She was so afraid and so shy. She took that to a whole nother level. So now she has this, Post your page group that has probably over 13,000 people in it, guys. 13,000 people. And she's the leader of this. And she did this when she was a certified consultant. So you don't let a title hold you back from doing the things that you feel that you need to do. Just because you essential or certified does not mean that you can't be a leader. You can be a leader at any title, at any level. So don't let that hold you back. And that didn't hold Kathy back. So she just kept going and kept going and kept going. And I'm just so proud of her because I remember, I know what it was like for her not to, to want to go live. She just refused and want to do it, was always nervous and afraid. She's doing it now without even thinking about it. So you guys, just like uh, Jen said, we always have events and I have the bigger events. As a matter of fact, I've got one in January, the boat show. We have the World of Wheels in uh, February. We have the uh, home show in February, please guys message me and tell me that you want to join us because here's this is how you're going to gain. You're going to gain the contact. You're going to have new customers. You're going to get the experience. It's everything. That is valuable. You know how much people pay for leads? Leads are expensive. So this way you get to get those contacts face to face and you get the training all at the same time. So you just don't get any any better than that. Same thing with Jen. If you're in her area, you're on her team, jump out there. And you know, I'm going to tell you something else that I, for my team members, I don't require you to help set up. I don't require you to help break down. You don't have to bring products. It's everything that you don't have to pay for anything. It is just there. All you have to do is just bring your samples, bring your labels, because you get to relabel things, because that's your customer. And they'll have your information on the products that they buy. Super easy. I wish somebody had done that for me. I started from scratch at the beginning with just my kit. All of us start the same way with starter kit. So I started with starter kit and I kept growing and growing because I used my host rewards. And then I would also reinvest because I would take my commissions and reinvest. So over time, I was able to build to the point where I could work events along because at the beginning, Ms. Wells worked a lot of events with me. And at the beginning, we used to pull and put things together I don't necessarily have to do it anymore because I build up over the years and I set my events up a little different because I want to use my events for training. So that's why I don't do it the other way I used to because I do it more for training now. So I set it up, invite team members out so they can build and grow. And that is very valuable. A lot of people won't do that for you. So that's, yeah, if you're close to DPP, it, all of my team wants to do an event with DPP. 
it's a long way for us, but every single one of them are like, oh man, DPP needs help. I wish I could go out there. Yeah, but we're, we're a good distance from you. So <laughs> sometimes they just can't make it. So they just deal with me because I'm there, but yeah, on the lives and you got to do it. And I will tell y'all, I, I may not get a lot of views while I'm live. I get a lot of people that comment afterwards that do the hashtag replay, but you got to remember that the, your customers, they can buy Cincy from anywhere. They can go on Cincy's website, enter their zip code, and they're going to give them a consultant. They can buy Cincy from anybody. The reason they buy from you is because of you. So don't be fake. Any of y'all that have seen my lives know I am a hot mess express. I will tell y'all that from the get go. When you catch to my live, you're going to hear dogs barking in the background. You're going to see my kid running around in his underwear. And if you're, if you're not lucky, you might see my husband do the same thing because he don't care and he'll just walk through the living room too. But everybody knows to expect that. They know they're going to hear me barking at dog, you know, dogs barking, me getting on to Thor because he's just a hot mess like me. Connor is going to come and smell every bar and he's going to be over exaggerated on how wonderful it smells. And he's going to grab my buddies as soon as I open the boxes. You know, you might hear my husband in the background. The phones are ringing because I'm answering calls, but I don't hide any of that. And that's part of the reason that my customers come to me is because I'm not fake. We are DPPs the same way. You know who we are. We're an open book because customers and your family, your friends, their friends, what they can tell when you're being fake. It's like when you do the post to your pages, change it up a little bit. Because like for me, my thing is OMG. Everybody knows I say that. But if you don't say that and you copy one of my posts and it is like word for word, what I say, your customers are going to know that's not you. Okay. So if you're doing those posts to your page. I love you. <laughs> Who are you playing with? Make it sound like you. So if yeah. I, I've actually I'll and put my son's okay, name. Father Junior. <laughs> How so, are you, huh? <laughs> you bought a skin. Is that the first one you bought? I think somebody's unmuted. Can you mute your phone, my dear? I think somebody's unmuted. Can you mute, sweetheart? I think somebody's unmuted. I can't tell who it is. Christian. I can't tell it is. Chris? Uh, Wilson, okay. I think Kristen Wilson. Uh, she might have done it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think she's done it now. She's muted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that is my biggest advice to anybody. Go live. Don't hide anything. Be your hot mess, mess self. You know, that's why your customers are going to come to you. That's why they're going to buy from you because they buy because of you. They want to support you. So just make sure you're authentic on that. And, you know, like I said, you see any of my posts, you want to copy them. That's fine. Tweak it though. Y'all don't, you know, because sometimes people just copy and paste and then put it up there and don't realize that in there, I talk about Connor or having an autistic son and maybe you don't even have any sons. So your friends or family are going to look at that and say, what in the world? Who, who's Connor? I didn't know she had, she didn't have an autistic kid, you know, she doesn't own a record company. So just make sure that when you're doing those, that you kind of check over them. I always do. And I've noticed a lot of times that there's misspellings in them. And like anyone that knows me knows that I'm like really anal about that. So if I post something that's misspelled, they're going to know that that I just copied and pasted that. <laughs> So just make sure you're being authentic and make it a little more towards you so that people know it's not that, you know, cookie cutter type thing that you're really on. There was the record service. Okay. I know DPP does it all the time. I love watching her videos because she's just DPP and everybody knows that. I am a real impromptu kind of person. Like whatever comes to mind comes out. So it has to happen right then because otherwise I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> so I have to say that you're a lot like me when it comes to sharing with world about things that can help somebody else. Like I took my brother to the doctor today and I just went out there and went live and I talked about it because what I want to do is 
be a voice for somebody else that may be going through something. So sometimes when we're going through something, you never know who life we could touch. When I was sharing things about mama, sharing things about my son and my daughter, I mean, these things are to help somebody else that may be going through something. And and sometimes it's not sensory related, the things that I talk about. It could be related to just life. You know, the things, the things that I'm doing to my house, when my deck started to fall down, I start, I mean, I actually have a collage of photos so people can see how things are coming with the house. And I've helped the guy, I've helped this guy get orders from doing deck work. And because of that, he's discounting my deck work. So you never know what you're going to gain from things when you're doing something like that to help you helping somebody else. And yet you're helping yourself as you do these things. So, um, yeah, we truly are blessed. But one thing I got to say, guys, I feel like I'm so blessed because I have the best team with Sensi. I love all you guys. You guys are so amazing. And I've actually sit back and I witness how you guys have come so far, how you helped each other. Even when you don't know the other person, you reach out and you help, just like Jen just said, she just offered for you guys to copy what she shares. And you all may not even know who Jen is, but she's offered and said this. And look at how Kathy has done the things. Kathy has helped so many people. You guys may not even know who Kathy is, just with the verbiage, because sometimes I don't even know what to say. And it helps because even with the little videos that she creates, all of this coming together, we can help so many people just by coming together. You know, we are a family and it takes a village. We cannot do this by ourselves. You know, when we join Sensi, it says, start your own business. You start your own business, but you're not alone. You're never alone. You don't have to figure things out by yourself. We're here to help. Take advantage of the things that we have, that we what we offer. Take advantage of this. Don't sit back and suffer and go through something when you know that we're here to help each other. That's what we're here for. That's why we have made the sacrifice to have this call every week. We had this every week. All of us are busy. So there are consultants. I, I hear it often. Consultants are saying, well, I'm struggling. And the first thing come to my mind is, do you are you on our weekly call? And most times it'll be no. And I'll say, okay, if you couldn't reach, if you weren't able to go live, did you catch the replay? They'll say no. Okay, sometimes you got to take action yourself. So if you're not taking action, it's going to be hard for anybody to even want to help. Because help, you got to help you first. It, help, it starts with you first, then the rest comes from us. When it's something, just like when you're trying to find something in the workstation, if you can't find it, come back and tell us. Well, I tried to look for it, but it wasn't there. But don't don't just not try first. Try first. I've seen consultants saying, well, where was this? And how much is this? But did you check the workstation first? So check the workstation first. And if you can't find it, then, then come out and ask us to help you locate it. Do that. You know, do all you can to try to become more self-sufficient because that's going to be a time that we're not around. We may not be around. So you don't want to rely on anybody. So I know when I joined Cincy, I didn't have anybody to rely on. My sponsor was new, so I, she wasn't my go-to. I had to figure this thing out. I had to go to workstation, go to YouTube, teach myself. So become self-sufficient, but don't be in a situation where you don't feel like, oh, don't feel like you're bothering anybody. No, that's what we're here for. We're here to to support you, to, to uh, cheer you on. And that's something else I want to say, guys. Oh, my goodness. When you have success in your business, success can look like a lot of things, guys. Success could be that you share a post on Facebook. Success could be that you got a new warmer. Success could be that you earned something. So success can look like a lot of different things. So shout yourself out on your page. Don't be ashamed to shout yourself out. Secondly, shout somebody else out on your page. So if you see somebody else just hit certified, shout them out on your page. Because people want to be a part of a winning team. If they see that you're winning and they see your team members winning, they're going to raise their hand and say, how can I do what you do? Because I want to be a part of a winning team. So don't feel like, oh, I'm not doing anything yet. That's what you want to say. I haven't done that yet, but I'm next. That's how you share that on your page. I'm next. Raise your hand. 
I'm next, okay? And put that on your page. Shout somebody else out. So you're next. If you haven't done it yet, you're next. Yep, it's like, I'm so glad I took that picture when we were at the house, the, the Airbnb at SFR, because we decided that last night we were all just going to have a little round table. We were going to have an impromptu, just training, talk to each other. And sitting at that table, I am so proud of Amanda because Amanda said in that sitting there that she was going to walk that stage in Orlando as a director. And so everything going on with my mother-in-law, I kind of missed, I saw, I was proud of her, but I waited when I could remember. I said, you know what? I have to shout her out. And I had that picture where we were all sitting at that table. And when she, that she was probably at the time when I took that picture saying she was going to walk the stage as a director with me in Orlando. So things like that, take those pictures. You may think it's nothing. You know, I just took that picture just because I hadn't even shared it on Facebook, but at the right time, it was there. And as I was able to say, hey, we sat at that table and she said, I'm going to do this. And here we are a couple months later. And she did exactly what she said she was. So then and not only did I shout her out, but then I had to shout out Mitzi, too, because Mitzi had promoted not as hard, not as far. But we knew she said she was going to walk the stage, too. So it's, hey, she did, she's one step closer. So, and some people like me, it's not about the money. It really isn't. I love the products. But for me, what Cincy is to me is the family. Because I can tell you, I can pick up that phone right now. I can call DPP. I can call Courtney. I can call Mary. I can call Alicia. I can call any of my girls on my team. And I can tell you, before we hang up, we're going to say I love you every single one of them, because that is my family. And that is what I needed. And that's what Cincy gives me. So that's what's so important to me. When I joined Cincy, I, I could really care less about the other stuff. It's the friendships that, and it's not really even friendships, it's family. That is, y'all are my family. And I, I have instilled that in all my team members as well. Like, you do not know what it meant for most of my team to meet DPP and Kirk at SFR. That was like, they were insane. So yes. So if you guys, you have to go to an event, you have to meet everybody. It's, you will not, I mean, Sakima on here. Sakima, I love Sakima. And you know, when I met Sakima, we had never met before. And she was going to Atlanta like we were for world tour. And so we made it a point to make sure that Sakima was with us and that she sat with us and that she went to lunch with us. And she is our family now. My team loves Sakima. And it was, we didn't know her, but she's part of our team. So she's our family. And we weren't going to let anyone in our family be by themselves there. So we made sure that we found her and that she came to sit with us. And that's what Cincy's about to me. It's the family. It's being there for <laughs> Yeah, I do appreciate that. And I love you guys as well. Thanks. Yes, we love you. And Chandra, mm -hmm. I see you too. She was there with us at SFR at the table. So, you know, just little things that that you don't get in other direct sales. I've been in another direct sales. I know some of you have before. I know a lot of people and others, and they don't get what we have at Cincy. They just don't. You don't, they don't walk into home office and have the entire home office clapping and telling you how much they love you and they wouldn't be there without you. There's just nothing like Cincy. And so for me, that's what it is. And all of my friends and my family know that. And that's what draws them to Cincy as well. I have a friend that I can talk to her on the phone after I come back from an event. And she is like, oh my gosh, Jennifer, I just love, I can hear the excitement in your voice just talking about it. And so people pick up on that and they know that I'm sincere about it. And that's what's going to draw people. Be honest with them. Let them know why you love Cincy. And, and you'll get them. It may take time. Remember, you don't just, you know, what do they say? You don't plant a seed and have a tree the next day. You have to water it. You have to take care of it. And so just work at it little by little. And eventually you'll be there. And my story is not going to be your story. DPP. My story is not DPP story. You know, everybody's going to go differently at different paces. But if you never give up and you keep at it, 
you will get where you want to. Maybe not in your time, but you will get there eventually. You're absolutely right about all of that. Oh my goodness. And I was, you know, and Tammy called me tonight and she was so thrilled. She said, I just did a party and uh, I got this fundraiser that I'm just so stoked about because she is so working so hard to get her mom on this trip. Guys, I don't know if you heard the story, but we got to get mama on that trip. So <laughs> she's working so hard to get mama on that trip and she's doing some things she's never done before. So I found that if it's something you really want to do that you've never done before, you got to do something you've never done before to get to someplace you've never been before. And that's what she's doing. She's doing, I mean, her PRB was over $4,000 last month. She's never done that before. She's never repeatedly re re uh, get people to join. She's leading her team like I've never seen before. Getting out there doing parties and she's sharing. She's leading these calls. I don't know if Tammy's still here, but I mean, and she was at SFR too. And uh, once again, we all looked out for one another. I mean, I remember when uh, Mia was needing a place to stay because Kathy couldn't make the trip. So that left Mia and um, saying in a, in a dilemma. So Mia wasn't going to have any place to stay. So one thing I got to say, Jean said, oh no, we're going to house her. She does not have to worry about anything. We're going to house Mia. And then Jean also found a ride for Mia. It didn't stop there. She found a ride for Mia. Mia just stepped out there on faith and rode with somebody she did not know. Once again, since the spirit. So all of this, all of these pieces come together. Isn't it amazing? Just like Jean said, I have not been into another business to have it to compare, but I've had people to come to me and say, I feel like this is nothing but family for me over here with Cincy. I've heard this too many times. I don't, I can't compare with anything, but I've heard it a lot of times, but I know from what happened last year, that thing came together so quickly because Mia was able to go. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Cause she was not feeling like she could go, but uh, GM made it happen for her. You're fine. That's me. I'm a, a problem solver. I always have been. <laughs> if there's a way, I'm gonna, if I can't do it, I'm going to find a way to help somebody do it. That's just the type of person I am. That's why I said, for me, it's not about the money. The money is nice, of course, but I, it's that's not what's important to me. I, money doesn't drive me. It's the friendships and the family and the feeling that I get from my Cincy sisters and sisters and misters and you know, I will tell you, I went, when I went to SFR my first time, not in um, Charlotte, but in Utah, I flew by myself, left at like five o'clock in the morning and I, I'm arriving in Utah. I don't know anybody that's there. I know them from online, but I don't know them from anywhere else. And I will tell you how great it felt to walk off that plane and Dennis was standing there waiting for me to make sure I didn't get off that plane by myself and gave me the biggest hug. And then we went straight down to wait for Mary. So that's someone, I never met him in person, but he made sure to stand there so that I didn't get off that plane by myself and not knowing anybody or where to go or what to do. So in Cincy, you're never alone ever. And that's just something that I've never found before. And I knew at that point, that I was where I was supposed to be. That was so amazing. I forgot about that. You were right. That's how that happened last time. Oh my gosh. That was so awesome. <laughs> that was, it's yeah. because only eight people total from our team at SFR. Such a big change from there to Charlotte. And yes, it was amazing. Everybody's got to go to Orlando. Mom and dad will be back. And I've never met them. So. Oh, yeah. Everybody needs to go there. And go to World Tour. If you have not registered for World Tour, go ahead and register for World Tour um, before it sell out. Because I'm sure it will sell out. So make sure you go register for that. Hey, I even got my hubbies going with me. And we've already got our, um, our vacation is going to be, we're going to take a week and go to Orlando and um, stay there for a week um, and just do our family vacation. But him, me finally getting him to go to an event with me and go to SFR 
Now it's like when I said, okay, we're going to go to Atlanta. We're going to go to Orlando. And he goes, well, I'm not going to Atlanta. So we're going to Orlando. I never in a million years thought he was going to go with, but now he's been to one event. So now he's going to the events with me, even with his whole anxiety. So it's just funny the way events, they say leaders are made at events and it's true. It just gets that fire under you. Oh yeah. He hung in there. He did. (laughs) He hung in there. I could see that the, the excitement that was going on around him. I bet he was thinking like, oh my goodness, I want to be there at the next time. <laughs> well, what's funny is he, when we saw Courtney cross the stage for star director, that's when he thinks, okay, what do we need to do to get you there? So you can walk that stage as a star director. So to hear the change in him, I mean, and he's got anxiety. So, you know, he had a little bit of issues at leadership dinner. But he worked through them and he stuck it out. And I think the biggest change for him, if you've got a family member that's just not quite sure, take him to SFR. I'm serious. Have them go with you because his whole pers- his whole perspective of Cincy changed when he saw me at SFR. Of course, you know, I'd been to director boot camp. Then I had, you know, our team. So I knew a lot more people this time when I went. But the fact that going and seeing one, what Cincy does for us, how much they truly do care for us, the way the other consultants care for each other. And then seeing us walk, seeing you walk the stage, that gives your family pride too. So it, it really did change his whole perspective on Cincy from going to that event with me. You're right. It does matter. Cause I remember uh, taking my husband to Las Vegas years ago And that was the one time I did not walk across the stage as annual mentor. I got annual sales and I walked across stage as star director. He said, why didn't you walk across the stage with the other one? I said, because I didn't earn it. I said, oh, no, if he noticed that, I can't not, I just, I just cannot miss it anymore because he noticed it. So, yeah, that's what pushed me to get our annual mentor every year because he noticed that I did not walk across that stage that year. So, yeah, I think that is good. That kind of keeps you going, you know when your family member can be there to cheer you on. Yes. So guys, we gone past nine o'clock. Oh my goodness. I guess we want to make sure we respect your time. We just kind of have so much going on tonight. I mean, <laughs> but want to thank you guys. Debbie, don't forget the picture. Did you get your picture? Oh, picture. Oh. Let's get a picture. Okay, I did. Come on, let's, let's get the picture. Who has a way to get the... Everybody on at one time. Anybody can do a landscape kind of photograph. I don't it, know. You know, with my phone. Hmm. How many do we have on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me see. Will my phone do it? I think I can. Is there just nine of us on here? Or wait. Uh, six, six, seven. Okay. See. Thank you, Ms. Will, for the reminder because I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm on pictures Oops. let me see let me see how many oh. let me move mine mine just keeps going like right over it's like over dpp space it's over people's faces all right i got one i think i gotta do one more there we go i think we got it My, i'm gonna be in the corner of both of them but <laughs> at least got one <laughs> You're mute, D- you're mute, DVP. Oh, I'm, I'm mute. I'm just talking. <laughs> okay, who's going to SFR by the show of hands? Well, in the show of hands, the comments, who's going to SFR in the comments? Uh, uh, world Tour? Uh, well, both. Okay, oh, okay, type in World Tour. If you're going to World Tour, if you're going to SFR, type that into. Just want to see how many people plan on going. Uh, who's registered for World Tour? Say you registered. And if you plan on going to SFR, put SFR in the comments. Just want to see. Like Shonda raised her hand. Register. Remember, if you haven't registered, you get those 500 points after you register for the incentive. Yes. Oh, I'm loving it. Uh, See, some have registered. Some registered for SFR. I mean, uh, World Tour. Some have registered for World Tour. Some... Some are raising hands for SFR. Yay. 
if you, if you guys did not raise your hand for SFR, please just make plans to go. I mean, please, please not. And you're going to, guys, when you go to world tour, you're going to want to go to SFR. I promise. That's what happened to Tammy. Tammy went to a uh, world tour and she was so happy that she registered for SFR. It just changed her business. Um, Amanda told me she's oh, thinking about it. Okay. Uh, yay. Okay. And you get guys, don't worry about the calls because there are ways that you can minimize the calls by uh, joining in with some other people who are going. Like, uh, Jen, are you getting a, another Airbnb this time? Um, we we're doing, but it's smaller because we're taking our son and we're doing it. Um, like my two daughters have joined my team now, so oh, we're okay. Like, um, family. I know. Um, I think Mary and Joe might stay with us though, at least for a couple of days. I think they will. But um, I know Amanda had already rented one. So okay, they, okay. When did that immediately? I actually had talked to Kirk. I was going to um, do one that was um, his neighbor um, has one there in Orlando. But um, I, with everything going on with Rick's mom, I kind of fell behind on all of that. So we just rented ours. And I was able to find one now. Um, we did Verbo, I think. And you can get, I think, depending on how many people and if you do, like we did, I mean, we had like 20 people in the um, Airbnb that we did last year. So it broke down to like $200 a person. Um, but I've seen that you can get the one we're getting, I think has six bedrooms. It sleeps like 15 or 16 people, something like that. And it was $2,500. And that was for Saturday, um, the Saturday before SFR to the Sunday after SFR, because we're going for a full week. So for a week in Orlando with six bedrooms, that's pretty. And it has a pool and a game room at the house we're renting. So if you're not staying as long, you can probably get them for cheaper than that too. And then just gather you a group of people that wants to go. And even if you can't find enough, you can go into the, um, the SFR group and they'll have a post for people that want to, you know, that are looking for a room. Well, that's that's great. Those are great tips to offer for people who may um, struggle with the finances. So that would be great. And then you can work your business, work your business real hard, start to get those commissions so you can be able to afford to go. <laughs> so, but anyway, guys, we know we're going to cut it off if we gone past the time. But thank you so much, Jen, for all of the information. This call has been amazing. Uh, and then give us those uh, links too for the Amazon so we can... Yeah get those things that you share if you can share yes. the links in the group okay the well shelves. thank you thank you hmm, the shelves and something else that you yeah that right there yeah if you could share that but thank oh, you so much hmm? this thing what's that the, uh, to put the um contacts in the ballot box oh yeah 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 right okay yeah okay yeah. So. Great tips, girl. Great tips. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Love you guys. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.